Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Stockholm. I'm finally getting around to a reel that was previewed. This one uh, comes in from Dick from Philadelphia. Dick's been a long time uh, channel viewer and uh, subscriber. And uh, he sent this one along because, uh, well, I don't have one in my library. So he asked me to service this one and uh, to show everybody how it's made and what it is and so on. Look at that real spin. Is that beautiful or what? It's just so nice and tension free there, right? This is the Okuma Solterra. It's the 15CS. It's a level wind or uh, lever drag reel. Dick always keeps his uh, reels in nice condition. And he said this one's basically a routine service and uh, just available as a subject for a video. So we're going to do that. And uh, as we do that, we're going to take apart the exterior pieces and parts and encourage you to be like, the, uh, like Dick and the other channel viewers. Please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, please uh, use the notification button. Uh, to let you know when I'm posting and uh, you'll see if there's a reel out there that interests you that you would like to learn more about or maybe you have that reel and you'd like to learn how to service it well those notification buttons will let you know when it's posted and uh, you can uh, take a look and see if that's one that interests you. But well, we took the hold fast and the screw out that'll enable us to remove the handle nut and oh, boy this one's on tight it's actually a screw. And this one's reverse screwed. That's why it was kind of giving me an issue there. But this one comes out in a clockwise manner. Or turning away from you for those that don't, don't do analog clocks anymore. And uh, we're going to take that screw out so we can remove the handle. And the exterior pieces for this. Well, there was an also another reason why it was a little tight, and that's they, they put a little bit of that Loctite in, in there. Well, when I take my pieces and parts out, I put them into a parts tray. That parts tray holds all of the uh, everything that comes off the reel, so that when it's time to put the reel back on, well, it's there. Okay, so this handle is interesting. It's a screw-on handle. It's the reverse of the handle screw. Boy, they got me twice there. The first one is a, a reverse uh, thread, and then they have a double thread for your handle. Very interesting. It's a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way. Uh, that way, <coughs> when you uh, go to reinstall the reel, or if you get stuck along the way, you have a reference point. You can also go out to the internet and go get the schematic. And that schematic will give you the burst diagram and all the pieces and parts and numbers in case you need them. Well, this burst diagram is it's pretty horrible. It's kind of oblong. oblong, oblong. <laughs> that is a good word for me to learn. And, uh, well, I can see the general uh, connotation to it, but not, uh, not everything. But then again, uh, we're going to kind of work through this and we'll show you how to do this. And if I get stuck, well, we'll go back and do that. So there are five screws, if I counted correctly, there's, that are there for us to take the side plate off of. There's one in the back here. I always forget that one when I go to take them off. That'll go into my punch tray. And then there are four screws that are Torx screws. I have a screwdriver here that should mount up to that. Yep. And um, if you don't have that screwdriver, you can use one of those bit sets that are available and they will uh, enable you to take those out as well. Okay, I'm going to remove the lever before I remove the side plate. If I don't, I'm probably going to pull the spool out with it. Well, usually as soon as I say simply, something uh, something gets in the way, but this is uh, loose and we can see there's just some old greases in there that are kind of keeping this stuff well, pretty tight there. Alright, those are going to go into my parts tray. We'll clean them in a little bit. Here's the axle shaft that controls the spool, and that really is where the business end of this uh, servicing is about. We're going to take the other two screws out now. Make sure that those go into my parts tray. 
and then we should be able to remove the side plate. If you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, if you leave them in my uh, comment section of this video or any video, I do try to answer those for you and uh, get you back on track. Maybe if you're working on a reel and you're stuck, or maybe you're just curious about how a reel works or something, just leave that there and I'll try and get them those questions answered. This should slide up very simply. You can see in the back here we've got a couple of things going on and this is a great place to take a picture. There's so much going on here with the screws for your anti-reverse dogs to your bearing to your main gear and uh, just about everything else in between here. If I recall, I think that all of this comes out by simply removing the two side plate screws back there. Not sure. We're going to find out. We'll get to that. All right. We're going to take the spool off. The spool on this one, folks ask all the time about how does a lever drag work. There's a pressure plate under here. And this is just nested into the back end of the, the frame. There's nothing that goes on with this at all. But to engage your drag, you'll notice that this moves in and out. There's a, there's a spring-loaded system back here. You probably see it better from this angle. And when you're engaging in the lever drag, it's pulling forward the spool so that it engages the drag washer with the pressure plate and that's what sets this. We're going to service this first and we'll come back and service the, the main part of the reel. There's four screws that are holding the pressure, pressure plate retainer on. These are very small screws so just be careful with them. As I mentioned you have a um, parts tray here Sometimes it's difficult just to get these small screws like this into that parts tray. They just have a tendency to bounce, and fall out, and create general havoc. Whatever you do, don't leave them in that ring, because as soon as that ring hits somewhere, they're going to fly. So we'll take the third one out. Some of the lever drags you work on, this ring will have uh, screws. Some of them will screw into the side plate. Some of them are pressure plate fitted. There's all different ways that they manage to put this little ring on there. Uh, just be aware of what yours is so that you uh, you know how to do that. All right, all four of those are into the corner of my uh, parts tray. And now we can take out the collar. Here's your pressure plate assembly. Here's your spring. There should be a bearing in here. There is. There's another bearing here. Then this whole assembly, well, I thought the whole assembly was going to come out, but it's not. We have four screws on this side. Sometimes those will push out as well. So let's go ahead and take those four out. Again, be careful when you're doing this. Some people like to put paper, uh, towels down underneath their work. That way, if uh, if a piece falls out, it kind of gets trapped in a nap of the towel. Do whatever works best for you, but make sure that you have a system. And the uh, last thing you want to do is have these things bounce around. Well, I've left all of those in that carrier. I'm going to push them out now so that I don't lose them. That's what I mean. As soon as you generally put these carriers down, those screws go for a walk. walking there. It's just stuck on the back here. All right, four more of those little screws and put that in an opposite corner of my parts tray so that I don't lose those. And now we can we can service the axle shaft. There's not much to these. The, uh, there's a spacer. There's a bearing. There's a couple of tension washers underneath. Those tension washers are sensitivity type things. You don't need to change those. You can leave the orientation just as it is. The whole key here, let's oil the bearing. Let's clean the shaft. Put the spacer on. 
a little oil in the spacer. We saw this was this reel was really floating in terms of uh, how it um, uh, performed, right? It spun very nicely, so it's really not an issue with anything to do with the, the spool. But you want to do this service anyway. We just knocked out the top. That's okay. That burning is going to get oiled too. But we're going to start by putting this back together. I notice one of the things when I work on these lever drag reels is that the more you uh, get off your desk and back onto the reel, the sooner, kind of the better you are for that. There's just a lot of moving parts in these and you just don't want those parts laying around where they can get knocked about. So we'll set the first one in. And that didn't align to uh, two of the holes, so we'll move that over 90 degrees. And that's unusual, but I guess not rare. There you go, that's the right alignment there. Okay, so we skipped ahead a little bit so that we could put all four of those screws in and tighten them down. Now we want to oil that bearing that goes on the top side of it. Let that seep in. That's a shielded bearing, but not a, um, uh, not a sealed bearing. I'm just going to try and find my little razor knife here. This is a um, one of the drag washers for the reel. It should just be laying in there, just like that. And you have two options with this. This is the only side that does the business, so sometimes when you turn them over, you're going to find you have a new side, which is what we do. So we're going to do that, but I'll show you how to clean yours if both of those sides have been used. Take a hard bristle brush and just brush through. This could be like a toothbrush or anything. We don't use a wire brush because the wire brush will uh, damage the cross threading on it. But just pull it through and you're going to pull the old greases right off of there and you're going to restore the cross hatching to that drag. Uh, drag. Since we have a new one on this side, I'm going to just flip it over for uh, Dick and uh, he uh, certainly will have this one to use for some time. I'm going to put dry grease on this one. Sometimes the dry grease is optional. Depends on what type of washer you have. But in both cases, you want to wipe that off and just leave the sheen on there. That's all that's needed to be done there. And then we can clean the inside of this. There's just a little bit of, I guess, grease that probably was there initially set back through there. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to reverse that dry now so we have a fresh dry washer there. We're going to install the other bearing in here. I'm going to put the bearing spring on. Now I believe we have one more bearing here. So I'm just going to clean this up. There's some hang, some old grease that's hanging around there. I'll go ahead and do that. Is, is your bearing I just pushed out. We'll do the same thing, just oil it. And then we want to make sure that the face of the pressure plate is free of grease and debris as well. There we go. Put the bearing back in. Let's take the pressure plate and put that back on. And now we have the cap that's going to hold that assembly together. Remember, we have those four small screws, and me and those small screws, well, we just don't play well together. So if you see me from time to time, shut the camera off and come back and show you the end product, well, you'll know that uh, it's been a wrestling match. We'll get the first one in, we'll get it started, and uh, see if our luck continues. This is why I like the parts tray. I know where to look for the pieces and parts when it's time to reinstall. So a lot of folks have a little bit of trepidation about the lever drag wheel. One, because they may not understand the mechanics of it. And two, there's, there's some more parts in there and uh, some alignment that needs to go on in terms of setting that up for a free spool. But um, if you take your time, if you have a sense of humor, if you, uh, if you don't rush, and uh, just have a game plan, well, you can do it too. That's kind of what the whole idea behind Second Chance Tackle is. 
showing you how to do it so that you can maintain your reels. And I know uh, Dick was going to do this reel himself, but he, he was kind enough to volunteer it, if you will, uh, in the sake of, well, there's somebody else here who, uh, who could be doing this and uh, learn from it. All right, that one seems to be a little stuck in there. I don't know why, but it is. All right, let's go tackle this assembly then. There's uh, pictures are needed here. You want to take a picture. Notice that you have a hook. So this one looks like the number seven. This one looks like the letter J. Both of those are attaching this to the side case. So take your pictures. They also have these little uh, kind of squared out attachment parts. So we'll go ahead and pull this. And then we're going to walk it off. That's the trim ring. We're going to pull it up and over just like that. And then down. So when you go to install this, you're going to reverse this. Kind of come up over and around. I'm going to keep these left and right. These are your anti-reverse systems. I'll show you that in a moment. We'll do the same thing here. It's opposite, right? Come down and bring it out. And I'm going to put those into my porch tray on the left and the right side of the corner so that I know which way these go. So those dogs intersect with this ratchet here, these teeth. That's what's going to stop this reel. Okay, next up then, I guess we're kind of going by feel here. And the feel is these two would be next to come out. And we may need to take the center part off. I'm guessing we have to take the center part off. But we're going to see if the whole assembly comes out. It does. Okay. Yay. All right. All right. Here's your assembly. Those two. Put those in my porch tray so I don't lose them. There's your bearing, which goes in the case up top here. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to put some oil on that. And then you're going to notice we have an AR clutch here. So the other one is a fail-safe. Well, we can can remove the pinion gear. And I believe this screw is holding the main gear on. I'm just trying to keep the orientation on this correct. There we go. I didn't, didn't want to disturb that to the extent that I don't have to disturb that. All right, we're going to clean the main gear. Get all that old grease off of there. Grab that brush that you were using on the other one and pull that through so that you get all of the old grease out of the teeth on this assembly. Use your paper towels or whatever you like to wipe that down so that we don't get stuck with that. And then uh, we can just kind of put this one back together again pretty quickly. You have the piece that um, gives you the most issue here. So let's go put that right back on. And I believe the burring comes in from this side. Let's oil that burring. I'm kind of pop that at an angle so I don't want to get that in before we go too far. And then we have the drive. Okay, battery change. All right, so we want to take our case. And I get questions on this all the time. What about oiling the, uh, the anti-reverse? You do not oil that. That's a friction-driven piece. And um, it um, doesn't benefit from greases and oils. I just got a little dirt on there, I guess, from laying that down. Hmm. All right, we're going to take our shaft and install that. We're going to aim the other piece for the back end of the bearing, seat all of that, and then we have those two little clip things going on. 
And I think I also have to tighten this down. Let's make sure that I'm tight all the way with that main gear I am. All right, remember what we did here. We had the letter J and we had the number seven. So what we want to do is kind of roll that out to the side. that up or over. That's our letter J. Grab that. I think I just covered that up. I did. All right. I got ahead of myself. I have to put those two screws in first. Hmm. All right. Not a problem. This is where pictures help. So if you had taken a picture, you would have realized that this uh, these two screws go in first because you're going to trap them if you try to put that anti-reverse dog in there. And again, that's a fail-safe piece. Your anti-reverse clutch on the front end of this wheel is going to do most of the work. All right, now I can bring that over. And we can install this screw. So they got a lot going on in this back plate here. Now down, make sure that it works. This is an eccentric driven. So as you're, we'll show you as soon as I put the little piece on, how that's working. But this is the number seven, so that was on the upside, if you remember. We're going to flip it and rotate it and push it up. Wrong slot. Slip it, rotate it, push it up. Now we know why they have two slots on this. The hook slot is used on the one side and the flat slot is used on the other. So they're interchangeable parts but they don't go in the same position when they get mounted that way. And we'll just tighten this up and we'll show you how that's working then. Again, you want to make sure. Okay, when you're when you're reeling, these are in the out position. When it's time to back pedal, they come in and lock. So you're in the out position now, and that would be a fail safe. But when you're in a fail safe mode, it would pull it in like that and lock into those teeth. All right. Just make sure one more time before you go to close this whole thing up. Make sure those screws are all tight in your in your uh, cases. There we go. All right, we're in good condition there, and it's time to just kind of put all of this thing together and make sense out of what we've done here as a review. I got a little bit of grease on the side here. This has got an interesting piece. This is a mag driven reel. You don't need to do anything with mag washers. If you put anything in between there, it's going to interfere with the magnetic pole. And well, it's just going to be ineffective. Let's find the case now. Find the T and load the case in. And then once you're in, turn that axle shaft to make sure that it does not move. Next up then would be moving the side plate into the pressure plate and aligning everything so that it can snap on. This is where I like to use that small screw next. We took that off first. I like to put it in first because you need tension on this. And one of the things that um, I find is the back screw will hold the tension on rather than my hand as I go to reset that trim ring that belongs on the outside here. You remember that one? That's the one that kind of fell off when we were doing something else. All right, the trim ring goes on next. And then opposite this, right up here, that's where I want to put the next screw. This screw is a Torx screw, so we're back to that little driver. 
And this was an inexpensive set. This is an HDX, which is actually Home Depot's variety of a, uh, of a set. And quite honestly, I don't use them much. And I do have the multi-bit set that has this piece, uh, this bit. But you know what? It's convenient. And this one didn't take a lot to uh, remove the side plate screws. So uh, I did not, didn't bother with it to, uh, to make that work uh, the way I did. All right. Let's uh, go ahead and tighten that down. Give that spool a nice little spin. Make sure that it's spinning well. And now we can just go ahead and finish the rest of this then. So the next part up is your lever drag. I'm going to clean out the old grease on this side. This goes on the back end. And you always want to load this to the off position. Find your ramps then. And your ramp and your off position is going to be at an intersection. So it's kind of going to line up perfectly here. And then press that down so that it's seated properly. And then you can go ahead and screw that back on. So that's your preset adjuster. Okay, so we've got this set. And if we've adjusted this right, we should be able to turn this now and see that the gear shaft is spinning. Well, not yet. There we go. So a little adjustment will be needed. Push in the max, bring it over. And that's, that's kind of how you do it. And then you'll see that the spring is pushing it out when you go back into free spool. Whenever you make your adjustments on these reels, make the adjustments in the free spool mode. Do not make the adjustments when it's in gear. All right, a little collar goes on next. Then this should screw on. We had some issues with trying to figure it out, but it screws on this way. Just like that. And then this was a reverse screw. I don't know why they did that to me, but I guess they just wanted to play around a little bit. that all down and we'll give it a test. So lever drags take a little bit longer. They take a little bit of knowledge about what's going on with them. Sometimes you'll see some interesting little internals like we saw there. But overall, once you get the concept of them, well, they generally seem to, to be the same. Let's see where we are with this. Just trying to find the, the collar for it. Yeah, almost. One more little piece of tightening. That should do it. And if I'm lucky, there's only one more screw in my bin. That would be this one. And I'm going to find my little screwdriver. Putting that on should lead me to the test. All right. So we're in free spool. And we just have a beautiful casting spinning reel. When you go to first strike, your handle should be turning. Nice smooth operation. That's a pretty powerful drag right there. And then you should be able to complete the swing all the way over on this reel for max drag. Again, you should see this pop out in reverse now and go back and fall into free spool. So that's it. Very nice reel. It's the Okuma uh, Solterra. It does have the mag uh, for the casting. This one's set about where it should be. So most of the time folks uh, don't quite understand what the max drag and um, magnetics is all about. That should stop you from um, uh, getting bird's nests. And it should do it because you should match the weight of your lure and the line to the drop of the reel and, uh, and set it so that when it hits the ground it does not, uh, does not bird's nest. Well. A good place to start on all max 
uh, on magnetic drives is still right in the middle, and that's exactly where Dick has this set in the middle. Now, I don't know if he's using it for casting or not, but regardless, the middle is a good place for that. And again, just a nice reel all around. Smooth operator, ready to go fishing again. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you to Dick for sending it in. And uh, we've all learned a little bit about it today. That's the first time I worked on that uh, the back end bridge there. And that is an interesting approach to uh, putting in that fail safe uh, dogs and also to uh, holding the, uh, uh, the bearings and, and the like in that assembly. So, uh, to all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do. To all, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.